so here in LinkedIn we looked at the different um, screens briefly I still want to look at some other elements of the interface on the very top right we saw business services and try premium then we've got messages so it also has a built-in messaging system where you can connect with uh, relevant people to answer questions this is private though no one sees this the thing about messaging though is it's limited on purpose you're not going to be able to send messages to anyone on LinkedIn like on Twitter you could tweet to anyone in the world on Twitter that you're not connected to it's a bit more like f Facebook in that you have to be connected with a person you followed something on followed someone on Facebook they followed you back you know friend requests so very similar here on on LinkedIn this always frustrates people because let's say you've created an account and you want to send a message to someone in in your company well if you don't have a connection with that person then you can't um, you can't uh, give them a message you have other notifications here like when you get any requests to connect when there's uh, other forms of updates and such so those are notifications and then here specifically um, would pop up people that are requesting for requesting your connections and you can invite contacts if you connect a, an address book this is what I skipped previously when I when we created the account if you still want to add people from your various address books it's found under that little person and then you select your network this is going to be telling me people you may know. I usually skip those until I fully complete my profile because if my profile is not very complete, it's kind of guessing really about who I might want to, to connect with because it doesn't know enough about me. The final icon after you add your own photo here, that final icon will also show your photo and there's sign out. I've got a basic account, most of us probably do, and then we can do premium, manage job postings, change language, and a bunch of settings. We'll take a quick moment to look at settings, because again, when we looked at the other networks, there's a bunch of settings that we should look at, because the defaults oftentimes are not the best. So hover over your icon on the very top right and click Privacy and Settings. I might ask you for your password again. This is a screen, then it tells me how long I've been on, on, on uh, LinkedIn. You can change your password, your email, add phone numbers check your payment history, all of that, upgrade. You can put it into a email? You could, exactly. Uh, you can click the button for, for change right there, change or add, and then it'll let you change your email. Now, this whole screen of settings and privacy has a lot of sub-screens that I'm not going to go into. But notice we've got profile, communications, groups, etc., etc. So you've got these tabs with sub-elements, and there's lots of sub-elements. So, for example, change your profile photo visibility, edit your public profile. Some of them are redundant. That'll just take you back to a screen we've already looked at. Manage who can discover you by your phone number. So if you choose to add a phone number, and someone searches in LinkedIn with that phone number, they could find you. You can turn that on or off, of course. You can block people from connecting with you on LinkedIn, and then you can manage them here. Let's select who can see your connections. So, again, uh, I want to connect with a person, but I need someone in the middle. And so, if I don't want to show who am I connected with, I can go here and change those different options. You can follow me. So there's a lot of fine-tuned detail here. It seems kind of overwhelming, but it's useful because there's lots of ways to fine-tune your privacy on LinkedIn. 
there's a spot here that might be useful, manage your Twitter settings. If you took the previous class, we learned four networks, and then we got the creeping realization that now I'm going to need to manage four networks. No, now you're going to need to manage eight networks by the end of this class. But one way to make it easier is that if you connect your Twitter to your LinkedIn, when you publish something on LinkedIn, it can then automatically go to Twitter. So you don't have to go to both networks, you can just post something on LinkedIn and it goes to Twitter. So during the break and such, if you have a specific question, I can answer that here, but it's a bunch of privacy settings. Communications. This is something I would have you look at as soon as you can. Communications, set frequency of emails. When you first create a, a LinkedIn account, there's a lot of emails of activity that you get. If it's too much for you, you can go here and deal with that. Communications, turn off invitations, turn off this, set the frequency of emails, what kind of messages do I want to receive? Again, you should look at that on your own and choose the best settings for yourself. This is one of the things that people always ask me. I get too many emails from LinkedIn. How do I fix it? Well, we go up to your icon, manage settings, and it's communication. You just go through these different screens and set the options that matter to you. Groups and companies, same sort of thing here. Once we talk about groups and why they're useful, you can manage them organize them, leave them, and all of that. If you're getting too many emails from groups, this is another place to edit that at. What's Daily Digest email? That's going to be sending you kind of like a best of email. You might not have logged into LinkedIn today, but what LinkedIn will do is it will connect we will collect a bunch of posts from your connections and send it to you on an email, like a digest. And then if you want to read the whole thing, you can click to log in and view the whole thing. So that might be one of those emails that you get too many of. So you can decide to change that. Under account, we also have other things, language, other security, close your account. So if you want to give it all up, under account, close your account. Request an archive. That will give you the ability to download everything that you've put on LinkedIn. And then you can make a backup of it on your own computer. You can make a backup of everything that you've done on LinkedIn and then close your account, for example. So that was under the settings. And then you've got back up on that menu, help. It's a bunch of help topics. Okay, so the last piece of the LinkedIn interface is one of the most powerful ones, but it might not be obvious. We've got this search search box up here. And here we can it says we can search for people, jobs, companies, and more. Well, click on this little menu here. They call it the hamburger menu, because those three little lines are like a hamburger. I don't see it, but it's the hamburger menu. You see that on a lot of websites, actually. Those three little lines, they call it the hamburger menu, hamburger style menu. Click on that little menu there, and then you can fine tune. I'm going to search, but show me results of jobs, posts, groups, people. If you don't set an option, it'll search all of this, and then you might get too many results. Let's say I'm searching for jobs in the world of baking. So I'm going to select jobs and start typing, let's say, bake, baker, bakery, bakery manager, Bakery Crafts, let's see this one, Bakery Initiatives.
Bakery Initiatives is a global and independent bakery consultancy firm offering customized services and turnkey solutions to new bakeries, etc. So they've got... Um, they showed up on my search there and I can maybe apply. And I've also got a follow button. You might see follow buttons, especially on companies. Follow is very similar to any other social network where you follow and their updates will show up on your home screen. So maybe I do want to stay up to date with the posts of this company. So I can click follow. Oh, look at that. Snooze is hiring an executive chef. That's an amazing breakfast place here in uh, Hillcrest. It's always very, very, very full. But they're looking for an executive chef. Does anyone use the, the, the storage website Dropbox? If you use Dropbox, apparently they're hiring a head pastry chef, which I think is very funny because that website is about uploading it's a cloud storage you upload your documents and save them there but apparently they need a they need a head pastry chef on on the premises so here i search for jobs and i got all of these jobs and i can then fine tune it by location and so it's this is your resume 2.0 this is linkedin one of the purposes of linkedin creating this account putting all your information there so that then if you're looking for a job you can search jobs with these keywords. You have filters to fine tune it. And then uh, hopefully find the job you're looking for. Maybe you're trying to connect or find out about a company. Maybe you're researching a particular company to to get a job there. You can do that as well. Search companies, and if they're if they're available here, So if you're trying to get a job at a particular company you, and they've got a presence on LinkedIn, you can look them up there, do some research, and studies show that the more a person is educated uh, about the company they're trying to get hired for, the better a job interview will go. So if you're looking up Southwestern College, for example, reading about their mission statement and websites and all of that, recent updates. I want to stay up to date, so I've got a follow button. So search looks like it's um, it's always there. You might you might ignore it, but it's a very powerful feature on all the social networks. This is always really to search within the network. This doesn't do a regular search throughout the whole internet. This is just within the network. So you can further explore that on your own. I'm going to move on. Any, any questions about search here? Do they have to have their um, site open to 
Okay, I'm living. I mean, if you're looking for someone, don't get by myself, but I'm moving to my network people. Am I going to find myself? Um, that's going to depend on how, on yes, how public someone made their profile. I believe at the very minimum, even if someone has their profile completely private, they are still going to show, you know, very basic information, their name and maybe job description and picture. Besides that, you're not going to be able to see anything else. So, for example, there's my profile. Um, if someone were to search for me, for Victor Campos, and they get a, a variety of results on this page, maybe the correct one shows up. And then you've got the button to connect, send in mail, share. If you connect, um, that's not a guarantee that, again, the person will connect, because if they don't know you, um, they can easily reject the the invitation and again if you're like me at least a person needs to see what's in it for them to connect with you so uh, I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings but most of you that if you do try to connect with me I will probably not because I need to see your profile and see what do you have to offer for me and then I might connect Okay, so let's move on over here. Um, if you hover over interests, select groups. We're working on upgrades to make your group simpler and more relevant. Okay, thank you. But what this is about, um, when we looked at Google+, we saw the value of communities. Whereas there's hundreds of millions of people on Google+, but communities, people congregate there on Google+, about a specific topic. Same thing on LinkedIn. There's 380 million people. They're all separate. They're doing their own thing. But people still congregate on a, on a specific topic. So here is, here's those topics. Groups. I can find a group, create a group. I don't recommend you create your own groups unless you have a lot of connections because then your group is going to be a ghost town. If you've created this group, no one's joining it. You're not enjoying working in the group because no one's commenting. I wouldn't create my own groups. I would search for groups. I would look at interesting groups and connect with those. Some of these groups will simply allow you to connect just by clicking join some of them have a process where they where they vet you very similar to Google Plus where I try to join a group but they won't let me until they check my profile and then allow me so here's some examples that mine popped up here yours may be different but look at this industrial bakery 3600 members Um, you are able to click on a group before joining. You are able to click on the group's name to read what is it about. So right here, Mohammed wrote, Is this possible to cool down bread pans in 30 seconds? And he wrote something else. And then Fred, entry-level twist tire on display now. Stefano wrote a new concept to develop bakery products. So the point of this is, in theory, all of the people that have joined this group care about this topic. I care about this topic too. So I should have a button to join. Some other oh, is a button to join. Once I've joined here, I can post something to that group. Very similar to Google Plus, like a regular social network, although mine says your membership is pending approval. So this is a way to then further build a network. If I'm connected to a group where we care about the same topic and I post relevant content, like sharing a relevant link, or maybe writing something of my opinion, and people within this group see it, that could entice people, who's this Victor that keeps writing such great content? They could then try to join or try to connect with me. 
hire me, whatever I'm trying to accomplish on LinkedIn. But this is how you're going to further get more connections and activity on LinkedIn for free. Uh, you're going to join communities, you're going to contribute to communities. How often? That's totally up to you. If you do this once a month, that's very good. If you do it once a week, that's better. If you do it once a year, it's not so good. You're, you're not going to be known. But I've got here, for example, a, a title of 200 words and some details, and I can add links here. Is this a general discussion, a job, or is it promotion? And then I can share it. And then the 3,000 members of this community could see this. I will become known, start to build a network of connections. Here LinkedIn is saying, start by commenting in a discussion. Group participation gets four times the number of profile views. So it would make sense. I'm making a name for myself in these networks that care about topics that I care about. So it would make sense then that these people then would say, who is this John Smith? And they check out my profile. Kind of like Facebook, it says sort by popular, sort by recent. So food logic bakery software. And this particular group has a section of, of discussions, specifically promotions, jobs, and about screen. Who are the members? This might be a valuable piece of knowledge because then I can go in and try to see about connecting. I can view their profile and then try to connect. Some will, will have an easy button to connect and some will have more of a process depending on how they set up their profile. So that's under groups. That's a whole thing to explore. You're going to look at that on your own, but I want to show you groups because they are valuable. We saw how valuable they were in Google+. Plus. This is very similar. So we've talked about using LinkedIn then as a personal tool. You may want to do that, you may not. So let's say you want to use LinkedIn uh, to build an entity of a company. Notice under interests, we also have companies. Here it would show me any companies that I'm following in their latest updates and such. And when I go here, I also see on the right side, create a company page raise brand awareness, announce career opportunities, and promote your product and services with a LinkedIn company page. You can go on to read more, uh, to learn more, and it'll, and I do recommend to, to read this. It's a lot of text, of course, but um, there's only so much that a particular class can talk about. But here, I could go to create, and then start setting up, start setting up this, this account, 
I might not be able to get that far into it because I have this fake company, but let's say Victor's Bakery and then Victor at bakery.com. You have to verify that you're an official representative of your company. If you go up to interests and then companies, you should see it on the right side. What's that? You click create and it showed you something different. And you're on a frequently asked question. Oh, okay. Go back up to me. Oh, yeah. So just click create. Yeah. So I won't be able to go very far. I haven't verified my email and a bunch of other reasons. But this is the spot where you would then create your company page. Creating then this company page again creates an awareness of your company on LinkedIn. You have to decide though do I really need a LinkedIn company page? How are you going to use LinkedIn? For me personally to make connections or to get my company uh, followed. The big reason to have a company page is uh, much more either that you're trying to hire someone or that you are trying to publish content on social media in a, in a monologue format. Remember last month I talked about using social media in a dialogue or a monologue. If you weren't here last month I talked about both ways are relevant. I often recommend, and I do this for my clients, to use social media as a dialogue. A dialogue is a discussion back and forth. So on Twitter, we would tweet something from the company. Someone might answer, so we reply to that person. We might use the company Twitter page to tweet to people that are not connected yet. We're building a dialogue, back and forth connection. Another way to run social media that many of, of the most biggest companies do is the monologue. However, they're so big right now that they don't need to engage with their clients. They can post a brand new thing on Facebook or a brand new thing on Pinterest and they're going to get bunches of likes and follows and all of that and, and questions, but then the company never engages. That's another way to manage it too. But you can really only manage it that way when you're a big company that you can afford to ignore people. LinkedIn, you can kind of do the same thing. You're going to publish content from your company, and there is the ability for people to comment and reply and such, but then that requires, again, more of that effort. Are you going to run a monologue or a dialogue? It depends on what you're going to use LinkedIn for, and you're not exactly going to use LinkedIn for company purposes like you would do the hard sell, for example, on Twitter or Pinterest and such. Are you trying to get more employees, more attention for your company and such? So like I'm looking at Baker's Bakery Initiative and they're just posting a bunch of links to, to things such as a meetup, um, an inspiration about a food for thought that got 17 likes, Southwestern College put something about Earth Day and the 2015 Grad Fest, what's new at the library. It's a bit more of a monologue. Well, the thing about these email addresses, for example, uh, I'm creating an account and it's asking for your email address at the company. If I'm adding Victor's Bakery at yahoo.com, it's going to reject it because it needs to have a company based email address. I would need Victor at Victor's Bakery.com. And you would get one of these email addresses by having a fully f uh, functional and correctly set up website. I would need a victorsbakery.com to create victor at victorsbakery.com. Or if I'm at Southwestern College, I need to provide my Southwestern College official company email address. 
So most likely, if you're using Hotmail, Gmail, Coxmail, all of those free kinds of emails, you're probably going to get rejected because they're seeing that's not a company email. That's a free email that anyone can create, like any spammer can create. These, no one can create Victor's Bakery un except me because I own victorsbakery.com and have the ability to create email addresses with that name. Is that uh, something you purchase and you, purchase, you go to a uh, host? Yes. Oftentimes you also get it for free. If you're paying for a year of domain or hosting, oftentimes you get free email addresses with your company name. So you would get that over from GoDaddy, Bluehost, Wix, Share, uh, Squarespace, whatever. You get it from your provider of your website. Let's go back to the home button. I went back to home as my personal profile. We'll look at two more things um, regarding getting uh, building fame, building attention on LinkedIn. One of them is sharing updates. So just like Facebook, just like Twitter, I can share an update. What's on your mind? Just got a new job at, uh, I don't know, Mr. Hayes. And so there are all of my, this will be totally public, and all of my connections would see it on their home timeline. I can attach, I can add regular text, I can attach a picture, I can also add a web address And that will actually then create a little preview of the website. It's not too obvious, but if you add a link to a website, you can add multiple links, but it'll only create one preview. You can add a link and it will look like that. So it's uh, an interesting looking update. Share. And now all my followers would see that. Then what my followers can do is like, comment, share, like a social network. That has some relevance and importance. But let me show you a better thing that is actually newer. So this shouldn't really, in theory, be that new. We talked about it in Twitter and Facebook and all that. It's very similar to that. Here's what's unique to, to um, LinkedIn. And I always lose it, but I saw it over here under... Let's go to profile who's viewed your profile. Maybe because I haven't verified my address, but I saw it over here. Go to Profile, Who's Viewed Your Profile, Who's Viewed Your Posts. LinkedIn has a brand new publishing platform, basically a blog platform. So there's uh, an aspect of, of, link, of modern LinkedIn now that instead of writing these, these little updates, these transitory short attention span updates, that I'm going to put one today and one tomorrow and people are going to forget about, I can use the publishing platform to write 100 words, 500 words. I can write these blog posts that are a bit more evergreen. I can, if I don't have my own regular website, if I don't have victorsbakery.com, I could publish blog posts here and I have linkedin.com slash in slash victor and I've got blog posts here and the point of this is writing blog posts will then allow me to share them on the different networks when people search on top here and if I wrote a blog post on a particular topic I could get found so it's again about putting this content out into LinkedIn and it does go out into the world at large because it's a public profile so Yahoo could find it, Google could find it, etc. Uh, it doesn't seem like it's going to let me because I just haven't verified my fake email. But once you have your, your account verified, you'll, be get, you'll get some of these extra features. One of them is that, posting, using it as a blog platform. This is pretty new. So if your competitors don't even know about this, you have a head start, don't you? 
if you're adding blog posts and your competitor is yet another realtor and you're adding blogs about your you know your territory or your best tips on getting uh, a loan and such and your competitors are not and people are link on LinkedIn are searching and they can find you as opposed to your competitors. Let me watch this video. I haven't seen this video before. Let's see what it says about publishing. One of the remarkable things that I found through writing is that it's helped me kind of make sense of my own professional path. I think I've absolutely found my calling. I feel really lucky that I'm in a position to work with students and young people and doing work that I really enjoy. I've often thought about writing a book or publishing articles, and I thought, well, I'll try publishing on LinkedIn and just kind of see what happens. It's been really amazing to see that while I really identify with a young population, what I have to say actually resonates with a much broader audience than I would have ever expected. There's no way that I would have had that audience using any other medium that was available to me prior to publishing on LinkedIn. I didn't make these decisions deliberately. I sort of made them with a sense of, I'll try this out and see what happens and see where it takes me. And currently it's taking me to Australia. I'm sort of in awe of how my career is kind of unfolding. It's really sort of a surreal experience to have people reach out to me for advice and to say thank you so much for what you've written because it doesn't feel like I'm an exceptional human being. It feels just like I live my life like anyone else. The only difference is that I have less of a barrier, I guess, in terms of what I share. And in sharing that is why people feel like they can connect with me. So in this case, uh, most obvious then for, for writers, but um, it's a it's basically a blog platform and you can make a blog whatever you want and it says reach a larger audience well remember LinkedIn has 380 million people and there's plenty of people that know how to search in LinkedIn search outside of LinkedIn find the content that they care about and is if you tap into this free tool you could end up in Australia So I'm not going to be able to show it exactly, but it's I found it here under profile, view your profile. And sometimes I also see it when I'm over on uh, my regular profile, I think, because I haven't verified it. But also I've seen that link under profile. It, it says post. There's the updates, which are the, which are the quick little updates. And then there's these longer form posts. I see it sometimes here as a button on my main profile. So if you would like to do that again, Obviously, it's a promoted video, but the concept is you can try it. You can add one short blog post, 100 words, once a month. Um, it could be completely rough, and as you get better at it, perhaps, as you, as you like to do it, you might get more natural. And the point of that is, well, I'm using LinkedIn because I want to get hired as a as a pastry chef, well if I'm writing once a month or once a week about my experiences in the world of baking, someone that is looking for my someone with my talents could have read my post and then clicked connect now, send a message, hire me, best case scenario. So there's still many other nuances of, of LinkedIn a lot of screens to look at, but at least we've looked at a variety of reasons why to use LinkedIn, personal or business, a variety of screens. And with any social network, then there comes a time where you have to try it yourself. You have to make a mistake. You have to look up an answer, ask a question. So we're going to end the main lecture in a moment and have some lab time for you to continue to fill out your profile or ask individual questions and such. But let me stop and ask then, any general questions on anything we've talked about all day today? Uh, mm -hmm. I'm not so much sure what the post section is on my homepage. I'm not finding it on my homepage either, but I found it when I went to profile, who's viewed your profile, and then who's viewed your posts, it then tells me start writing. So if it's still not there, I'll look on your on your screen. Okay, good.
good. Any other general questions? All right, so... Can you make it like personal interests also? The whole LinkedIn? Yeah. You could, definitely. Um, it's geared toward per, per professionals and businesses and such, but you can use it however you want. Mm -hmm. And if you use it in the way that you want and you get good results, then that's great. That's that's a win. Mm -hmm. Yes. Can share Specifically, like what what do you want to share? Okay, so let's say you saw an interesting article about technology and you want to share it here. There's a couple of ways to do it. Let's say I'm over at socialmediaexaminer.com and I found this great article that I want all my followers or connections to see. Um, over at the article, oftentimes, there's some sort of button on the, on the website to share on the different networks. So just look for a share button on um, for LinkedIn on the article if you don't see one you can still also do this it's a little more effort but you can copy the address of that article and then back on LinkedIn when you share an update paste it and like I showed a moment ago it will make the little preview so there it is it's gonna share eight LinkedIn marketing tips and I have, uh, if the article has a few pictures, you can scroll through to find the different pictures. If you don't want a picture, you can remove it. And then this text is editable also. It took a preview text from the link, but it, I could change it over here to say something else. Make it public or only for my connections. Make it public and also send it to Twitter. And then share. So the easiest way is just find the, the LinkedIn share button on an article or copy and paste as an update. Any other general questions? All right, so remember uh, the lecture today and future days, I'm recording this, I'm uploading it, and if you'd like a copy of the, of the link of this playlist, send me an email. My email's on the syllabus. I'll turn the printer back on in a moment. Request the Social Media 2 class, and I'll send you a link of the lectures. Yes? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, to cancel it, it's going to be then in the account left there, and then close account. Up on your menu of your profile, then you go to manage privacy and settings, and then on the left you'll go to account. Under the account section, you will see close your account, and there's a process you go. All right, so, so that's so it for the... the What's that? How long does it hang on to the email address? If you close your account... I'm not sure. I haven't done it recently to, to have an answer. What you could do is change your email address to some other throwaway email address and then cancel the account. And if they hang on to it, well, they're hanging on to an old irrelevant email. So that's it for the moment. Thank you for coming. Make sure you've properly enrolled. If you haven't uh, enrolled, see me. And then also make sure you've uh, signed in or at, uh, signed out or at least signed in. And we'll do it again next time.